Welcome to CoinGeek Conversations, and today I'm connecting with the CoinGeek Conference in New York. I'm in London, but in a little room somewhere behind the scenes at the conference is Brandon Bryant. So welcome to CoinGeek Conversations, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're listening to CoinGeek Conversations with Charles Miller. You've just been on stage with a whole lot of partners talking about a new gaming initiative, which I'd like to get onto yeah. in a minute. But I wanted to start by asking you about uh, something else which you do, which I've noticed, is that you talk to students at your old university about Bitcoin, introducing people to Bitcoin. I think it's called Bitcoin in Business. And I wanted to ask you, what has been your experience of introducing the ideas behind Bitcoin to students mm -hmm. who are coming to it anew? What, what have you learned about their interests and, and their reactions to the different ideas around Bitcoin? Yeah, it's been really interesting. Um, so I started teaching the class four years ago, and I, I really think Bitcoin's evolved in the four years. So naturally, the students have had different reactions. I think when I, I first started uh, the class, it, it was really around how the blockchain just kind of works and maybe simple payments. You know, everyone was really interested in the price. I think it was going crazy at that time. But as the class has evolved and the years have been gone by, I've been able to show real use cases and bring in real companies through, through Zoom or Skype um, and really explain how they're using the blockchain for actual business use cases. So I, I think, you know, every class, and it's been growing every year. I think we started with 20 students uh, a class, and now I have between 35 and 40 students. And I, I think this past semester, I actually have a student that's interning with Transmira. I had, had Robert Rice come in and speak to the class virtually. So yeah, I, I think every, it's getting more and more, but every year, um, you know, a handful of students really grasp the concept and really want to go deeper. And how do you navigate the question of BSV, which I know that you're a big supporter of, and perhaps the expectation of students, which is that you're going to be talking about BTC and Ethereum and the whole, the whole big wide world of, of crypto? I, I always start and talk about money the first class. I almost don't even talk about um, Bitcoin or Bitcoin SV, BTC. Uh, because, you know, I, that's how I got into Bitcoin is like I, I found it shocking that I didn't really understand how the Federal Reserve worked or central banking or any of this worked. And I, I had a master's degree coming out of school. So I think I fi think people find that really, really interesting and want to dive deeper. And then once you get into the blockchains and the different versions of Bitcoin, you know, they're, they're college students. So you just have to explain the economics and why BSV is sustainable and why um, other blockchains maybe not be. The Business and Practice website, uh, which is uh, where your course is advertised to, to students. I like this quote here, where it says that you are, quote, passionate about staying at the very bleeding edge of this new technology. I guess that means hand cash. Um, well, it sounds rather right. it sounds rather alarming. But tell me about your relationship with Handcash, which, for those who don't know, is a wallet uh, for Bitcoin SV, which is started by two entrepreneurs who are based in Spain. How was that connection made? Yeah. So in in 2020, I, I got a scholarship from the Bitcoin Association um, to come to London and attend a CoinGeek, and going into it like. I, I knew Handcash was the best wallet. It had the, the best user experience and I just loved it. So I knew I had to, going into it, I knew I had to connect with Rafa and Alex. The founders of Handcash. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what I did. And, you know, lo and behold, like they, they were looking for a developer shortly after and I, I joined the team. Right. Well, let's dive into this subject of gaming, which you were talking about at the conference today. And for those who haven't caught up with that, 
how does hand cash relate to the world of gaming or how is it going to in the future? Hand cash is the wallet that connects um, the different games and platforms. So like I said on stage, it, it's really unique. You're able to bring your digital goods and your money wherever you go. And so hand cash is here to create this great user experience that makes it seamless between games and apps in the ecosystem. Well, let's just take it one step at a time. Supposing I'm somebody who is not involved in gaming or, or Bitcoin SV, what would my sort of journey into it be? Where would I start? Would I need to start off by downloading a hand cash wallet or what? Yeah, you'd download a hand cash wallet and um, soon we will have uh, fiat rails inside of hand cash. So you'll be able to use Apple Pay or your preferred payment method to, to buy some Duros or some Bitcoin SV. And then, you know, the goal is to have the sign up process in under a few minutes, and then you're able to jump instantly into some games. Again, for anyone who hasn't quite caught up, perhaps you could just give me an explanation of what a Duro is. Right. So every single game now has their own virtual currency. So Fortnite has V-Bucks, NBA 2K has VC, and these virtual currencies let you buy exclusive content and upgrades in the game. And the Duro is the virtual currency inside of the hand cash ecosystem. So a Duro is a, it's a denomination of Bitcoin SV. So you, if you have 200,000 Duros, it's the equivalent of one BSV. It's just a convenient way of creating a unit that is of usable size, I guess. Yeah, it's building a brand of a virtual currency on Bitcoin SV. Okay, so let's assume I've downloaded my wallet, I've used my Apple Pay to buy some BSV, and then I realize that easily converts into Duros. Uh, what happens then? So you'll be directed to our App Store, and inside of the App Store, you'll find the Haste Arcade, the Nifty Jigs app, and you know all the other apps that are using the Handcash SDK. Um, and you'll be able to connect to those apps, authorize payments, and um, on your way. So it's going to open up the possibility of a whole range of games which, in which I can use the same currency and easily move between games which I wouldn't otherwise in the gaming world. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. And we're partnering with Nifty Jigs to support run tokens. So you'll be able to take your digital items and NFTs to go across games inside of the Handcash ecosystem. How do you see this developing? Is it all ready to go, or what are the problems that need to be solved? Yeah, Haste Arcade actually just launched um, today uh, at the conference. And so their arcade is ready to go, and they're just waiting for more and more games and developing on their own. Nifty Jigs is working on Duro Dogs, which will launch in the fall. So. We're moving. Is the Duro and the, this game ecosystem going to be exclusive to hand cash? Or if I have a CentB wallet or another kind of wallet, how, how is that going to work? We encourage everyone to adopt the Duro. And I, I think uh, Crypto Fights has a, a Duro mode. And we've seen other BSV apps that aren't specifically for hand cash use the Duro. We really think we can take this Duro concept as a, a virtual currency that works across app, apps and market to a really broad audience. So in that sense, Duro is not a, a piece of intellectual property of hand cash, or at least it's being given by hand cash to everyone to use, is that right? Yeah, we're, we're creating a brand of a virtual currency. Right, and just hoping that hand cash as the kind of market leader of that brand will do well from it. Yeah, exactly. You're a developer in, by background. What is the balance between the development work and the business development side of it? Because it seems like this is almost a, a, more of a business problem than a, than a software problem now. Yeah, you're 100% right. Um, I, I'm not the main lead, lead on this. Uh, I'm really taking cues from um, the business side. Uh, but you know we're we're a tight knit team, so they always keep us updated, and yeah, so it, it really isn't a, a software problem. Well, I mean, I guess that's encouraging to hear, 
because, you know, we've always been hearing that Bitcoin SV is taking, going back to the original protocol and it's going to be set in stone and that there won't be too many complicated and fundamental changes in software. Do you think that we're actually beginning to see the fruits of that now? Yeah, definitely, because you're seeing higher order um, apps and games being developed. Like something like Run or Nifty Jigs, you couldn't build on Bitcoin a few years ago because of you didn't know what the protocol would look like. So how can Unbounded invest all this money into building Duro Dogs when they're not even sure what Bitcoin will look like in a few years? So now that it's been set in stone for a year or two, people are able to plan longer term things. And when, when you can do that, you can have more complicated products and just better products in general. So yeah, yeah. Th I think this is the first kind of batch of things you see as benefiting from the set in stone protocol. Right, right. that's interesting. Brandon, you were on stage today with uh, Built by Gamers and uh, Unbounded Enterprise and so on, different groups, different companies. What is the nature of the business relationship between those companies? Is it a, consort a loose consortium or is it a formal partnership or how do you see that working in the future? Yeah, Handcash is the official wallet of these companies and um, we have a business relationship where uh, Handcash is launching a referral program. So Built by Gamers has a huge fire hose of eyes and audience and attention and they're going to point that at hand cash in this, this ecosystem. And in return, they're earning a percentage of the profit from the top ups that those users that they refer get it. So everyone's kind of economically aligned to just drive growth within the ecosystem. As you say, built by gamers is already a very big business. It hasn't been in BSV so far, but it's, uh, it's potentially going to be um, really influential, I guess, in uh, boosting these smaller businesses that are a part of your group. Yeah, I like what Taylor says when he says esports is sneaky big, meaning like more people watch the, the main event in esports than the Super Bowl last year. And the, the interesting part is the micropayments concept in esports, like basketball and football, they came up uh, without this type of technology, but this esports industry is, is just growing and it's just, it's an infant. So I, I think it's gonna really benefit from this technological advancement in micropayments. And so you're gonna see it boom faster than these other things. When wallets first came along and Handcash was, is a beautifully designed, very simple wallet, I think the idea, if you'd asked Alex and Rafa would be, well, it's called hand cash, uh, that it was going to be used, you know, it's always the proverbial cup of coffee that you're going to buy with Bitcoin. Is that idea still viable or have we just moved on now into these other areas where we're not actually talking about buying cups of coffee anymore and that that is not really part of the vision anymore? No, I think it's still viable. I buy, I buy coffee with hand cash all the time in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, we have a lot of businesses that accept it with any pay. Um, right. Yeah. Well, but, you, you started with AnyPay, which was exactly designed right. to make that kind of thing happen. But I think that part of New Hampshire is kind of unusual in that respect. Yeah, it is. And I, I think there's a lot of opportunities in that space. Uh, but Handcash is a, a startup and you, you have to have laser, laser focus. Like the good thing about Rafa and Alex is they're experts at saying no <laughs> and choosing like a specific lane and a target. and. So Handcash is really going after the esports industry and gaming and everything that comes along with that. And we have to focus all of our resources on that. Okay, but tell me why you still have faith in the vision of the cup of coffee and everybody using it for those everyday purchases. <laughs> because uh, Bitcoin is great money. And if you use it every day, uh, you'll, you'll realize it. And that's what got me interested in Bitcoin in the first place, is I was going to school at the University of New Hampshire and I realized I could go down the road and use this Bitcoin to buy something. And that's kind of what led me to BSV is because originally, like, originally it was really cheap to do so. And then BTC fees, like the, the coffee, the fees were more than the coffee. 
and it it really shows you know bitcoin is good for payments but bitcoin sv well brandon thank you so much for your for your interview today and really good luck uh with your work with handcash thanks a lot thanks charles thanks bye now Thanks very much indeed to Brandon Bryant. Well, next week we change gear because I'm talking to Brian Choi of the Food Institute. What's the food industry got to do with Bitcoin SV? Well, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to tell you that until next week. So please join me then. Thanks for listening and see you again next time. double-edged. Wield it well and build your place in tomorrow. But trust it blindly and risk watching your progress crumble. Because much of the data we rely upon isn't reliable at all. At Enchain, we believe in data, but we put no faith in it. Instead, we build tools that enable enterprises to trust the data upon which they rely. Enchain. Data without question.